just realizing there's a, um, well, not a growing number of chairs, but there's two chairs in here that are hopelessly broken. Well, actually, one of them's hopelessly broken. It's the pink soccer chair that was in the back of the old Chrysler when I went from 45 miles an hour to zero in a split second. The other chair is the steampunk chair right here. Uh, it's gonna get revived here soon. I've got parts in storage for that. But in the meanwhile, I've got this, he uh, this thing here, the Jazzy 600. This is the chair that I took apart the motors on. I actually did a couple of videos on this one. We replaced the grease seal in one of the old motors, which was crummy. So I swapped on these motors that have no business being on there. These are, these are off of a Quantum 6000. These aren't the high speed motors, but they're a lot bigger and a lot torquier than, uh, than this chair appreciates. And it's sort of weird. It has Invacare electronics on it, or they look like Invacare. It says dynamic controls. But when I stuck those giant motors on, for some reason they don't respond properly. And I don't have a way to program one of these joysticks. So I figured the easiest thing to do was do a proper swap over to Invacare MK6 electronics, which I have a joystick here for that. And also the old pink soccer chair, which is completely ruined is over here. So I might as well poach some parts off of that thing. There's no way it's gonna be repaired. I mean, the motor housing's cracked in half, or one of them did. So I think we're gonna rob some of the electronics off of that and swap them onto this chair. All the motor connectors are the same for some reason, uh, so it's actually gonna be pretty easy to do. But I'm gonna get it pulled over here real quick and uh, we can assess to see how hard this will be. Look at that thing. It's um, clearly seen better days. So it's sitting all crooked and this wheel's not even on the ground. <laughs> yeah, the, the transport brackets on it got screwed up too. Yeah, it's uh, seen better days. I'm pretty sure the batteries in it will still be okay. I don't think the frame crushed that much. Um, this soccer guard will actually fit on a Quantum Q6 Edge 1, or this bracket will. Uh, so I'm probably going to use either this chair as a soccer chair or I've got another Quantum Q6 Edge 1 over there in the corner. That one is brand new though. I would rather not destroy that chair. I'm not sure what the plan would be with it, but I don't want to trash it just yet. I think mostly all I'm going to need off of this thing to do the conversion is the adapter cable that goes from the controller to the joystick because this one here has this, uh, flat nine or seven pin sort of arrangement and all of the controllers have this style of plug on them so there is an adapter on that chair i'm just going to rip that off real quick and then throw it on this thing and i've got a controller for this oh here it is here we go this is uh an mk6 i90 or mk690 amp controller i believe they surge over a hundred but i think I think that joystick and this were paired together at one point. So I'm going to hop down on the floor and uh, we're going to do some swapping real quick and see if we can get this thing to power up. This is the controller that was in the chair. Take these screws out of here. We're gonna reuse those. And what's interesting is, I'm pretty sure these two are twins. Um, oh, well, okay, so this says dynamic, and obviously they're made by dynamic controls. Ah, this is the Shark 50 amp, and this is an 80 amp one. It's interesting that, um, they feel about the same weight. I mean, I'm not the best judge of that, but um, yeah. So anyways, let's, uh, let's plug this thing up here and see what we get. I'm gonna plug our adapter cable directly into the controller here. There we go. Then we'll connect up our motors and then connect our power. <coughs> there we go. Then let's get this other joystick over here. 
I actually robbed the uh, speed knob off of this one, so I'll have to put that back on there. Okay, will it power up? Yeah, okay, we've got a bunch of errors, obviously. Ooh, the background is hot pink on this. Can you see that? Why did I not have this controller set up on the pink chair? That would have been awesome. <laughs> um, I actually didn't even know this was a color screen. Weird. Let's see if the brake, brake click off. Blah. Let's see if the brakes click off. Hey, it seems to. Cool. Well, that's good news. Um, well, ridiculously easy swap then. Drive two, slow three, tilt system. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have to use the uh, MK6i programming card. I uh, did a video about that a long time ago. And uh, we will get this thing adjusted. But for now, let's get this controller mounted in here. This is gonna be really, really easy. So these motors that I put on here from the Quantum are, uh, well, they have these big adapter wires that kind of take up most of the space in here. But it's interesting that Quantum, Dynamic, Invacare all seem to be sharing very similar things. Okay, there we go. Throw a screw in here. Could turn this thing into a soccer chair. It just has a van seat on it, which is what they call in the industry, just van seat. It's non-rehab seating, just like, uh, well, this wheelchair is essentially just a scooter or a mobility scooter that takes the form factor of a wheelchair, so. And it is cool, there's a lot of space around this controller too for heat dissipation. I can probably take the cooling fans off of my old Q6 Edge 1s that I was using as a soccer chair and uh, get some airflow down here. I mean, I don't think the controllers are gonna overheat. I have no idea if it's set up to uh, work with these massive motors. I mean, look, look at these. I mean, look at these things. These are clearly not designed to be in this chair. <laughs> um, but soccer, right? Look at that. And then our back cover should just slide back on here. Let's see if this will fit through here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this chair is gonna be wild. I have never done a mod like this before where we're using, actually, what are these motors rated at? I think these are like 1300 watt motors at 24 volts DC. Um, there's these little screws down here to clip these in place, tighten those up. On a lot of the Quantums or the Jazzy chairs, they have these little orange screws here and you don't have to take them all the way out. You just loosen them about halfway and there's a little hook right there. You can see there's a little hook right here that goes around that. Let me loosen the other side and I'll show you. And then it just picks up and that clears. And when you tighten these down, it just locks into that hook right there. It keeps the cover from coming off. What am I doing? This is probably one of the more dangerous things I've built. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, these Invacare motors are insane, but I'm not even sure how to program this thing. Um, it'll be interesting to see. It's gonna take a little bit of trial and error with that SD card, but yeah. The, this, this controller was set up for two pole motors and now we've got four pole ones in here. And who knows what the motor impedance is. There's no way to really tell that with the uh, Invacare stuff. Oh wow, look at this. See how, see how this whole thing is just sideways and crooked? Ugh. Always strap down your chairs in a vehicle. I need to see if I can get the batteries out of there because the batteries in that were brand new. The ones in here were like questionable, but I think they might be okay. All right, anyhow, um, let's get our uh, joystick mounted up here and uh, see if we can make this thing move. Uh oh, it's, it's reversed. Everything's backwards and sideways. <laughs> so straight back is fine, but left and right is backwards. Um, oh, that's actually really easy to fix. That's not even a programming thing. All we gotta do is take our left and right motor connectors off and swap them. Luckily, we're running these adapters down here, um, which means that all I have to do is take these, take these two things off and swap them. These are not keyed. There we go. Let me just power it up real quick and verify that 
it's moving the way we want it to before I jam it all back in there. Okay. All right, there we go, we're good. Let's slide our cover back on. And now we can get our joystick all set up. Get a nice shot of the ceiling here. Now this will just slide right back in here. There we go. And looks like a good spot for it. And then tighten down our little screw here. There we go. Give it a little bit of torque. Oh yeah. And look, we have we have a joystick, and it almost looks like it's supposed to be on the chair. Don't reef on it too hard, it'll move. There's only one screw holding it on. But if you ask me, one screw is better than no screws. And uh, I mean, it seems to be pretty solid. <laughs> this, this chair, this chair wasn't meant to be anyway. This chair is completely unsanctioned by anything that's considered normal or safe. Um, but what else would you expect? Okay, the pink chair apparently lives on. And we got the joystick mounted. I zip tied the cable down here. And I didn't feel like using zip ties, so I just wrapped all of these cables around this bar. I'm not sure if that makes this into a giant inductor or if that's how that works. Actually, that is exactly how that works, but one side's counter-rotated from the other, and I'm pretty sure these cables are shielded anyways. So we'll just pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> but it seems to power up and move. It feels a little bit weird, but I'm going to hop into it and... Uh, See what it does. I'm now sitting in this thing. Let's see what it does. Oops. We're gonna need to adjust the braking a little bit. It's uh it's not quite getting up to speed. When I turn, I can feel the motors jittering just a little bit. Um, so we we'll probably need to do some programming. I'm gonna try and go up this ramp and see what happens. Oh, torque. This thing wheelies up the ramp. Holy cow. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab one of the programming SD cards in the laptop and uh, let's see if we can make some adjustments to this thing. Cause, well, we're keeping the pink uh, background, obviously. Someone's clearly been in here. See the underscores? That's just weird to me. And then we have the seating mode that doesn't do anything. Oh wow, the date's still correct. That's crazy. So, I don't know how long both of these things have been unplugged, but the clock is still correct. How's that even possible? I mean, it was just off a little bit, but like different time zone? That is pretty astounding. Well, I'm gonna hop back in the other chair because I don't want to get stuck. And uh, let's see what we can figure out on the programming here. So turn on the work lights. Hey, we have light. An old Windows 7 running laptop. Oh, it actually doesn't have an SD card reader on it. I'll have to go grab one of those. And then we've got the MK6i programming card here. We're going to do first, though. We're going to plug this card into this chair and uh, do a read on it. Now, I know in my old MK6i programming video, I kept saying push left, but it was actually push right. So... Yeah, whatever. Fire this thing up. Okay, we want to move the joystick to continue. Store to SD card. I kept saying push left, but that's actually right, but I'm using my left hand, so yeah, whatever. Start storing. Right again. And stored okay. Wait, what did it say the name of the file was? Uh, I'll be able to know. I'll be able to tell by the date. All right. Um, now I need to grab the SD card reader, BRB. So we've got the software pulled up here, and it's set up right now as a four-pole rear-wheel drive chair. So that actually makes sense as to why our motors were reversed. Um, but let's go ahead and set this to 
Uh, let's do four pole center wheel drive HD. Those should have the highest resistance motors, I think. And we're gonna sell, set our accessory functions to none and off. Port one is mode, port two is drive select. Let's change that to, well, it doesn't give us power option, whatever. Invacare, okay, that's good. Power seating's off. Performance adjustments. Um, now I have no idea what this profile is like for these particular motors. So what we're gonna have to do is just put this in the chair and see what happens. Torque set to 36, traction is off. I'm gonna set it to turn off after an hour just because sometimes they get left on. And when the pink chair was still in the back of my van, the next day when I went out there after the crash, it was still turned on in the back of the van. So I think it'd be good to I'm setting most of my chairs now to automatically turn off after one hour, just because, I don't know why. Uh, save, and let's shove it back in the chair. Hopefully some of our errors should go away now that I've disabled some of the seating stuff. And read from SD card, push right, start reading, right again, reading. Some features have been disabled. Power off. Oh, actually, maybe our errors will go away now. Hey! All right. Okay, I'm gonna hop back into this and see what happens. Guess what? Remember how I said the motors are reversed because it was on a rear wheel drive profile and on those chairs the motors are facing the opposite direction? It's backwards again. So I need to take that cover back off and switch our motors back to the way they were so that now it will work properly. <laughs> I swapped the connectors back and now forward and reverse and left and right are backwards. So I'm gonna change it in software. I essentially reversed all the axes. So forward's reverse and reverse is forward and right is left and left is right. So we're gonna try saving this. I've never attempted this before. Um, but let's see if it actually works. So right now, forwards backwards, left is right. So in theory, this should reverse it all. I've never done this before. I'm assuming that's why those settings are there, but we're about to find out. And this is the kind of stuff that I do to um, test things out and see how they work. Some features have been disabled, okay. Did it work? Holy cow, it did! Look at that! All right, let's put it up into uh, high level mode, or speed mode here. Our braking is a little bit inadequate, but okay. Now I'm gonna hop into it and we'll go for a rip. I was zoomed all the way in. Um, yeah, anyways, let's test it out. Okay, so it works, but we need more speed in all directions. So I'm gonna make the changes here on the laptop again, then we'll copy it back to the chair and rinse and repeat. This is the process with these. You just gotta try stuff and go around and around and do it over and over again. And eventually you'll uh, get, what you want, we'll get what you're looking for. Ooh, that's a little more jumpy. Okay, um, one setting that I probably should have changed before I did anything else was the torque setting. Uh, it was set to like 28 and I set it to 52, so. Uh, seems to be working a little better now. Seems like a good soccer speed. How about the ramp? Oh yeah, wheelies up the ramp. There's not quite enough space in this garage to, whew, to actually test things, but it feels like, yeah, it feels like we're doing good though. I'm probably gonna turn the torque back down a little bit, but yeah, anyways, I've got one of these now. Oh, and I also turned the tremor dampening way down too. That makes a big difference in how quickly responsive it is. Okay, anyways, there you go. The swap worked. I'm gonna play around with the programming. 
I think I've got some transport brackets that will come off of one of the quantums I have. These brackets right here basically just bolt right onto these vertical things. And if you notice right here, these bolts are nice and long. So I'm pretty sure I can just put the transport brackets like this on here. And then once I do that, this soccer bracket will fit on this chair. So yeah. I think for now, just because I have this chair and I'm already screwing around with it, I might just use it as a soccer chair. 11% battery remaining. Okay, let's shut down the laptop. Um, yeah, I think this will work as a soccer chair for now. Whatever, I've got it in stock. It seems to work. All right, lots of stuff has just arrived. Um, I think this right here is what, is what we're gonna open first. I'm hoping this goes with this, which is an adapter. Aha! This is my dryer vent hose. Oh look, it comes with a twisty tie, like a bread, a bread bag tie. This will finally allow me to vent the dryer to the outside of the house. I've just been venting it inside ever since I hung that thing on the wall. Ooh, it even comes with uh, hose clamps. Okay, um, let's try and install this real quick. Okay, right now, so turn that off. No, off, off. Um, the, uh, the hose has just been coming out right here, but it's supposed to connect, it's supposed to connect to this thing down here on the floor. But as you can see, that hole is larger than this tube is small. And supposedly this adapter will allow that to do something, but let's install this first, or attempt to. Because this dryer is sort of like the small German style ones. It uses a much smaller hose. Let's see here. Actually, I think I can take this off here without pulling it off the wall. Ah, there we go. Let's see if we can cram this on here. Probably should have gotten an aluminum one. I actually thought that's what I bought, but apparently I got a vinyl one. Um, why is this so difficult? Come on, hands, you can do this. I'm gonna get some of my thermal flex tape and put that on there. I don't really like this, but for now, at least it's attached. Put this back on here. There we go. Oh look, it knows where it's supposed to go. <laughs> Now the part that I have no idea is if this adapter is gonna fit down here. Well, I'll let you know it does. Looky there. Let's see if this side goes on here any easier. Nope, it doesn't. Okay, well, you get the idea. I'm gonna grab my flex tape and fix this properly. I've got some nice HVAC, um, uh, like metallic metal tape stuff. And uh, I'll get that put on and dealt with in a little bit, but I'm more excited about some other things that showed up. This really heavy box right here. I think this has the secret sauce in it. I may have decided to start a side hustle and repair and sell certain products. And I'm hoping, based on the weight of what's in here, that that's what's going on. <laughs> oh, it is! These bricks of drugs are actually iPods. <laughs> Let me grab my lap desk. So this particular shipment is 14 broken iPod classics of varying generations. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of these uh, Gen 4 iPods, and then there's also a bunch of the Gen, Gen 3 ones. These ones have kind of a cool thing that is awesomely retro. These are the old school ones that have the buttons on the front and those buttons light up red, which is pretty sweet. There should be enough parts here between a lot of these. I've actually got another shipment of these things coming as well. But there should be enough parts here between all these to make something happen. Oh, and there's a few iPod Nanos too. Oh, this one powers up. Hear that hard drive though? That thing is not happy. But what's cool about that is these ones with dead hard drives. Oh wait, it turns on.
it's actually playing. The hard drive sounds like crazy, but it actually works. But that's okay, these ones with broken hard drives, I'm actually gonna be flash modding them. So I've got a bunch of adapters here so I can take out the hard drives and put in SD cards instead. This one seems to be powering up. Looks like all the ones that are on hold actually power up. That one's turning on. Wow, a lot of these actually power up, that's good. Powering up. A lot of these actually work. That is surprising. This one doesn't turn on, but this one does. Yeah, see what I mean? Aren't those red glowing buttons really cool? Okay, well, um, yeah. So it's gonna be interesting to look through these, see what music's on them, repair some of them. They're all varying sizes and different thicknesses. You can see this is a 40 gig, this is a 20 gig. <laughs> so many iPods. This, I believe, should be some 30 pin charging cables. I got a bunch of these things used because I don't have any 30 pin cables. Yeah. See? Charging cables. We seem to have some iPods. I think these things are coming back now because people like to listen to their music and they don't want interruptions. They just want to be able to play and not get notifications from Facebook or whatever else. But yeah, this is, uh, this will be fun. These things are pretty simple and parts are pretty cheap for them. But yeah, I'm gonna get them all plugged in and see what happens. Well, I think that's all for now. I've got another chair that I was working on. I filled a bunch of stuff with that as well. I'm gonna put that in the next video. We're gonna keep this all, this one here also short and or sweet. Um, but yeah, a few random things. Uh, there's some issues with the dryer. I'll talk about that in the next video as well. But for now, I will catch you guys next time, which should be like, we'll say two days. I don't wanna release videos daily because then everyone gets used to that. Then if I go four or five days, it's like, hey, what happened? words and stuff. I'll see you later.